Right, so I'm pretty sure everybody's seen one of these. And they're called a spiral vortex coin wishing well, or a variety of that. And apparently they're nine times more effective than a dewy-eyed puppy dog for fundraising because people just love to see that coin spin. It starts off slowly, it goes faster and faster, and then drops down the centre of the well. Now, mathematically, they're called a hyperparabolic cone. And then, in fact, what Kepler was on about when he was talking about planetary motion, and if we think about Einstein, it's what Einstein was talking about. If you imagine the space-time continuum as a plane, and a black hole as an infinitely massive point, it will form a hyperparabolic curve. Now, mathematically, hyperparabolic curves are a nightmare the model, but they form naturally in nature. All you really need is a plane and then a weight or a force acting on a point in that plane and that will automatically form a hyperparabolic curve and we're going to use that to make our own. So what I've got here is a bed sheet and I've got the cut on section of a gas canister although a waste bin would work just as well, you just want a large round shell and some rubber bands and we stretch the bed sheet over the canister and fasten it down with some rubber bands. When you've stretched it over, find yourself a bit of rod and push down in the centre. Now I'm using a bit of 6mm rod in this stand to hold everything stable, but if I push in the centre there, it automatically forms a hyperparabolic curve. Now you do find these kind of cones around, so the feet of bar stools, for instance, that's a hyperparabolic curve. Symbols approximate as well, so you can find them. But usually making them is quite difficult, but they form naturally in nature from this situation where we have a stretched sheet of something and we put a point weight in the centre of that sheet, it will form its own curve. And you want to press that down until you've got a beautiful curve. OK, so I've pulled out all the wrinkles. I've made sure that this is nice and tight like a drum. Yep. And we've got our curve. Now we need to stabilise it. I've chosen bed sheet incidentally because it's cotton, it's got a degree of elasticity, but also it will absorb stuff into it so we can stabilise it by painting it with the resin. And I'm going to use this, which is carb body for resin, it's a polyurethane resin. And if we paint a coat on top of the bed sheet and leave that time to turn, it'll hold its shape. Okay, so when that's hardened, like a drum, we can dismantle it and give it a sound. Okay, so this is cute and I'm sure it has its uses, but of course I want to play around with the water vortex. So I made another one, which is obviously deeper in a broader exit hole that fits this. So that will be behind there. And we're gonna try it with the water vortex spinning around, see if that makes a different sort of a la Victor Schoenberg. That's the idea. Let's have a look how this works. <laughs> That's actually quite hypnotic. <laughs> so okay. from fundraising to experimenting with water vortices, that's how you go about making these cones and clearly it's quite adaptable using different depths, different cone sizes. If you have different drum sizes that you're stretching it on, then obviously you're going to get very different sizes of cones. If you get to a bigger size, you might want to reinforce it with a little bit of fiberglass just to make it a bit tougher. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.